Well, hello and uh, welcome today to the Wiesman Academy web-based training series on the Vitacom 100 LAN 1 and the Vitatrol app. Uh, this is a, a setup that we have created so that you can get a hold of your boiler over your smartphone. So controlling your boiler from your smartphone is uh, something that uh, people have been asking for and uh, we've established the Vitacom 100 LAN 1 and the app together uh, to make that possible. So we're just going to go over that product today and, and some of the things that you need to know about the app and, and hooking up the Vitacom LAN 1. Um, so sit back and enjoy. If you have any questions, um, you can uh, type them in the uh, questions box and we would try to answer those. If we don't get to them during the uh, webinar, we'll get to them at the end. We'll, we'll kind of address them verbally at the end, any questions that we didn't uh, get answered during the webinar. So um, again, we're going to continue on here and uh, with the webinar and uh, enjoy. I hope you go by, uh, leave here with uh, more information than you came. So that's what we always try to do is enlighten and educate. So the Vitacom 100 LAN 1, the VitaData100.com server, and the Vitatrol app all work as a, as a system uh, to provide you internet connectivity to a Wiesman boiler or a Wiesman control system. Uh, the app can be used or the Vita Data 100 website can be used to access the boiler. So if you don't have your phone handy but you're sitting in front of a computer, you can also access it that way. Uh, but I think most of the time it's going to be the app, so we're going to look at both uh, situations. To enable this, we have to have some device to connect the boiler to the internet. So that is the Vitacom 100 LAN 1 interface. Uh, it is connected to the boiler through a, a lawn connection and then it's connected to the internet connection in the home or the, or the building through a DSL or similar internet connectivity. And once that's done, then the system will find on the internet Vitacom unit. There usually isn't any modification that have to be made to the DSL router. Um, that's going to be, we're going to be hooking up to it just the way it is. So there's nothing you have to know about internet connectivity other than to hook up a, a cable like you would plug in your computer. To get this system working, uh, you have to establish an account on the Vita Data 100 website. Uh, if you don't have an account, you can log on and we'll show you how to do that in a few minutes. Uh, but there's no cost of the account. There's no cost to operate the account. We don't charge any data charges. Uh, the only cost that would be involved is if your phone plan has a data plan or something like that, or your IP server, you know, you pay a monthly fee for that. Uh, that's the same thing you're paying anyways. Uh, so you're no, there are no additional costs to make this system work. Once the system is established, uh, you can also receive messages from the boiler or control system. Um, so the email messages can be sent to either a smartphone, a tablet, or a PC. But we can also send SMS text messages to smartphones as well. Uh, and uh, for those guys that still have a fax machine kicking around somewhere, we can even establish a fax number and then that uh, alarm or fault message or whatever it's going to be uh, the, the coming from the boiler can be sent to the fax message as well. And you can send it to multiple. So uh, you can have it sent to multiple email accounts or multiple SMS uh, texts or, or uh, a fax machine number all at the same time. So uh, this makes it very easy to get information from the boiler if there's a, a problem or a situation that needs to be addressed. The boiler controls are capable of handling three heating circuits and those three heating circuits can all be accessed from the app so you you don't have to worry about uh, you know I can only get heating circuit one or whatever uh, if the th building has three heating circuits through the Wiesman control it can be looked at on the app all three heating circuits uh, you can also hook up to your account uh, multiple Vitacom 100 LAN 1 devices. So you may have a customer that has a home and they have a cottage. And they both have a Wiesman boiler and they want to be able to get information from their boilers or control their boiler systems uh, from their phone. And they can have both systems uh, connected to their phones and they just basically have to switch back and forth when they want to talk to the cottage, want to talk to the home, uh, whatever the active one is, that's the one that's going to be used on the, on the phone at that time. So how does the system work? Well, let's take a look at the pieces. We have the boiler and you have the Vitacom 100 LAN 1, and we have a server that's set up to manage that data. And the server is a Wiesman uh, server sitting, sitting at Wiesman here, and you can um, access that information uh, through the server. So to connect the boiler to the Vitacom LAN 1, we need a LAN cable established. Uh, that means there's a LAN card in the boiler and a, a network cable between the two. Uh, and then we need a LAN cable connection between the Vitacom 100 LAN 1 and the DSL router. Uh, 
Uh, that then gets your VitaCom LAN 1 onto the internet. So for the DSL router then, then regulates and transmits all the data back and forth between the VitaCom LAN 1 and the Vita Data server as required. And that system is established. And from there, once that connection is made and that established you know, accounts are set up, then you can access either through the PC or through the VitaTrol app the information in the boiler. So what can you get? Well, basic information like you know setting up the temperatures for domestic hot water and heating, uh, setting up schedules and energy saving and comfort modes, all of these things are available and pretty much everything you can do from a user interface on the boiler you can do from the app. Uh, what you can't get to is the coding levels, the setup levels, those are things that you should be in front of the boiler to do uh, when you're changing coding settings. So those aren't available from the app. You still have to do that from the local boiler. But all of your day-to-day -day operations, somebody wants to change the schedule, turn their heating system on or off, adjust their domestic temperature, adjust their room temperature, all those things can be done through the app. The Vita Data server also can do that information. So you can all that information is forwarded through the server through the to the to the app, uh, and then you can get from a computer uh, email fax machine or SMS text message, uh, all can be places where those in, that information goes. So what's in the message? When I get a message from the boiler, what's it going to tell me? Well, the thing it's going to tell me is uh, the address of the system or whatever you called that system when you set it up. Maybe you called it Mrs. Jones Boiler. Uh, maybe you put her address in it. Uh, whatever you called the system when you set it up, that's what's going to be there. The type of message is going to tell you, is this a fault message or is this a, a we're okay message? Because not only does it send you a fault, it also sends you a, a message that says, I'm okay now. So once the fault has been cleared and rectified, uh, it, it tells you that. So as an example, you have a power failure in the house and the internet goes down. Uh, you'll get a text message on your phone or, or email that says that happens, but once the system reconnects and connects back to the system, it'll tell you, oh, I'm okay now. So you know that you know things that don't have to be rushed to and addressed immediately, uh, you'll see that the system's fine. You'll also get, if there's a fault message, you'll get the fault code. That fault code will then be corresponding to uh, an alarm message in the, in the Wiesman uh, manual, but, but you're going to get a text message based on that, like a, a textual uh, context that says, as an example, you may run into a, a fault code that says F2. So that would be a fixed high limit. So the text message would say uh, it's a fixed high limit on whatever equipment it was attached to. And then the time and, and the uh, signature for that. So you'll know when that happened. Uh, so th it's pretty valuable information from a diagnostic point of view. And it's something that you can look at as a contractor or so your customers can look at as a homeowner or whatever to keep their system um, to, to know what's going on. So. When we look at connecting the boiler to the Vitacom LAN 1, I said that this is a LAN. LAN is a, a building automation language. So it's, it's nothing special about this. You know, it's like German or English or Chinese or French. It's just a language that's used uh, to connect the two of them together. And they both have to talk the same language. So our Wiesman controls use a LAN-based com uh, communication process between Wiesman equipment and some building automation systems. So this is <coughs> what that is. But after you've done that, then you have the LAN connection. We're looking at it, this is a hardwired connection. And now people have said to me, why don't we do this Wi-Fi? Why don't we do it wirelessly? Well, here's a, a few reasons why we don't do that wirelessly. The first is your wireless communication in boiler rooms is notoriously bad. Think of how many times you've walked into a boiler room and you don't get any reception on your cell phone. Uh, because the pipes, the metal, the, the shielding that happens in a mechanical room interferes with wireless transmission. So this isn't going to be any different for a wireless internet connection than it is for your cell phone. So for that reason, we've decided to do this as a hardware connection. So you say to me now, oh, well, what happens if I don't have a ability to, to, to run a wire through the house? What do I do now? That's basement's finished or whatever? This is simple. Um, these on the screen there, you'll see what we call power line adapters. These are made by a third party manufacturer. They, they're available at just about every computer store, the store that sells computer equipment. And what they're designed to do is transmit internet information over your building's line voltage power. So this works on any single phase system or even on between a three phase powered system, two receptacles on the same phase it will work. It will not always transmit across the phase because of the phase differences. Uh, but what essentially you have here is you have one module that plugs into a receptacle in the boiler room. You're going to have a receptacle in the boiler room because the video cam LAN 1 has to be plugged in. And the other one plugs in the receptacle at the DSL router. 
Um, again, you're going to have a receptacle there because the DSL router has to be plugged in. So you're not adding any hardware in the building. All you're doing is adding these two little modules. Uh, they come with the LAN cables. You connect them then to the devices, the router and the Vitacom LAN 1. And crystal, bang, there you go. Uh, you've got internet connectivity through the line voltage in the house. And this works for any computer network, uh, even in your home, if you had an issue with trying to get to a tough place with no, no uh, internet connectivity, uh, you can use these modules. So this is an international uh, uh, recognized protocol that's standardized throughout just about everywhere in the world. Um, and it works, works pretty seamlessly. And it also requires no setup for you. You can basically plug it in. So when you pick up those, what you're going to do is you're going to buy a kit. Essentially, they're set, typically sold as a kit with two adapters to two LAN cables. And you'd, again, you just plug one into one end, plug one into the other end, connect the internet connection cables, the LAN cables, and you're done. There's no configuration. When we get to the uh, application of how do we get, now we've got connected the boiler to the LAN, we've connected the, LAN, the Vitacom LAN 1 to the internet, uh, what are we going to do here now? So let's look at the interfaces, the Vitatrol app. We'll start with that one. Uh, and the app is a convenient tool that you can download on your phone. It allows the heating uh, homeowner or heating contractors access to the system. Uh, it allows them to control the boiler remotely or access information from the boiler remotely. The app is available from both Apple and from Google. So there's uh, it, available for just about every phone on the planet you can get this app for. And it's the, again, the app is free, so there's no charge for the app. You just download it and, and operate it and use it as, as you need to. You can also, though, get to it from the vitadata100.com website. Uh, this is a website that's established by vSpin so that you can access your system. And you'll have to, to do some account management here initially to set up the system. Uh, but even once the system's set up, you can access any, any uh, um, control system that you have a VDCOM LAN 1 on that's established to your account from there. So you, you can log on to the Vita Data 100 website, and then you can see the system. Um, so again, any messages can be sent through email to that PC as well as being able to log on. Homeowner, contractors. Uh, both can find this very convenient. Uh, from a contractor's point of view, we actually have some contractors now that are, are looking at um, providing us, this as a service to their customer. So there is a contractor that we know of that um, deals with um, boilers in, in remote areas like cottage countries and things like that, and he provides us a service to his customers where he will get the emails and things from the uh, text messages from the boiler if there's a problem. The homeowner doesn't have to drive his two, three, four hours, however long it's to take him to get his cottage. The contractor can dispatch himself and, and get there and do the do the repairs. And uh, but it kind of relieves the headache of the homeowner saying, you know, I got a boiler up there and I don't know if it's working or it's not working. Uh, it's going to tell us when it's not working, and, and then you're going to be able to either deal with it or have the contractor deal with it. So when I want to get a hold of multiple systems, I said earlier we can contact multiple systems through this system. Um, so we have multiple Vitacom 100 LAN 1s in two different buildings. Like I said, maybe one is a home, one is a cottage. Uh, they're both sending and receiving information to the server. And from that server then, from multiple devices, the contractor's phone, the homeowner's phone, the computer at the, at the office or, or the home, maybe the husband and wife both have one, they can all access this, uh, uh, these two systems remotely. So there are two different levels of accounts. There's an operator and there's an administrator. Uh, the operator's account is going to be just uh, um, give you access information, be able to use and control the system, but it doesn't allow you to manage the account per se. It doesn't allow you to add users or remove users or change the other users' passwords or, or level of, of uh, access. The administrator, and the first person that sets up the account is going to be an administrator. It can be the person who uh, decides who has access and what level of access they have. And other than that, they pretty much have the same function. Uh, the administrator just is basically looking at So well, there can be more than one administrator on a unit. And so you can choose how that's set up, whether the homeowner or the contractor or the husband or wife, whoever it is, are all uh, administrators. And maybe the kids are operators, you know, because they you want them to be able to change the account. So the administrator can also grant guest access to users. Now, guest access is maybe somebody who you want to have as a temporary. So you say, well, I have a rental building, and I have a tenant, and I'm going to give them access to the boiler system in that building. Um, but you know, when they move out, I can remove that access simply by removing their guest access. And this is something that, that can be done as well as a, as a different level of access. 
Now, to establish the communication between the Vitacom 100 LAN 1 and the boiler, we talked about it being LAN. That means that there needs to be a LAN communication card inside the boiler or the cascade control, whatever vSpin control we're trying to talk to. Some equipment comes with a LAN card already built into it, like our uh, VitaCrossel 300 CU3A, and some do not, like the VitaDens 200 um, HB, P2H series boilers. They don't come with a LAN card built into them because we don't normally need them all the time. So you can have a choice here. If it's a single boiler and you just want to hook up the VitaCom 1 to it, you need a LAN card. So you can order the VitaCom 100 LAN, LAN 1 device with a LAN card. This LAN card then uh, looks like this one here. It has a single port on it uh, and it just has then the one wire to connect from there to the boiler. Now you might have uh, multiple boilers. So you have uh, multiple boilers in heating system or maybe you want to hook up other equipment, uh, an extra mixing valve control or something like that uh, to the system. You can then order the Vitacom LAN 1 without the LAN card because you're going to buy LAN cards for each individual device anyway, so there's no sense duplicating that. And these LAN cards you see have two ports on them as opposed to the single port that we had over here. Uh, the two ports then allow us to daisy chain the network together from one to the next to the next. And so there's one of two ways to do it. And some equipment, like I said, comes with a LAN card, some doesn't. You'll have to look at that when you pick up the boiler or look at the installation that you have there. All of the current black front uh, Vitatronic controls are compatible with Vitacom LAN 1. So you can see that all the Vitadens boilers, the Vitacrossel boilers, both commercially and residentially, Vitaron, cast iron boilers, uh, all of those that have a, a Vitatronic control on them are accessible through this system. And you can see it's an example there, the KW6B and the MW1B and the GW6B, those all come with the lawn card in them. So then again, we would be ordering the unit without the lawn card. Uh, but also our legacy controls, anything in the Vitatronic family. So going back to the white interface controllers that we had, um, the Vitatronic series uh, doesn't go back as far as Decamatic or Trimatic or any of those older versions where the communication protocol wasn't as sophisticated. Uh, but anything in the Vitatronic families um, will work with this device. So if you have a Vitadens WB2B boiler or a, a GC1 on a, on a um, Viteron 200, older Viteron 200, or a Rondomat, then you could certainly use this um, device to connect it to the internet as well. So we have the unit, let's look at how we put it together. You have the back plate, and you see the back plate here uh, just mounts on the wall, you, you screw it on the wall, and then the Vitacom LAN 1 just slips onto the back plate. Uh, once it's there, you're going to want to be able to remove the front cover because there's some information we need from the serial number and, with, and the information we're going to have to push some buttons to establish the communication. Uh, that cover simply pushes it a little bit to the right there and then pops it off. <clears throat> and then that card, that front cover will come right off very easily. Once we're inside, we can see the connections on the control. And we have wiring connections to the unit. We have power connection. Uh, it comes with its own power supply, so that just plugs into the wall, and then the cable plugs into the connection down here. It has a USB connector, which currently isn't used. It's a port put on the thing for future possibilities where we might want a USB connection. Uh, we have the number four here, which is the LAN connection. So this is the connection between the router and the Vitacom LAN 1. We have here a, an end switch. This is, um, uh, and when you have a LAN network, somebody has to be the end of the line. And we have to say who the end of the line is. So this device already comes with the end of the line termination in it. Uh, normally you don't have to do anything with the switch. It's already set as the last device, um, but there is uh, the switch there if at any time we needed to, for some future configuration, take that off. Uh, and then we have the LAN connection. So this is the connection between the Vitatronic controller uh, in the boiler and the device here, the Vitacom 100 LAN 1. Um, and this plug here and this plug here uh, are very similar looking. They're, they're actually they're identical looking plugs. So just be aware that one is the lawn connection, one is the LAN connection when you hook it up. Uh, if you hook it up backwards, nothing spectacular is going to happen. You're not going to let the smoke out. It's just basically not going to talk. So you plugged it into the wrong place. So um, that's a simple solution if you did not put it in backwards. The lawn system requires that everybody has their own little address. Now this isn't anything unique. Every communication protocol requires a specific address. LAN requires what we call a participant number. 
And this is the device's location or its address. So uh, like if your friend wants to call you on the telephone, they have to know your phone number. And if they don't know your phone number, they can't get a hold of you. This is how the system talks. If one device wants to talk to another one, they have to have a lawn participant number. Uh, so when you add or remove any lawn devices, we have to do a new participant check. And we'll go through that in a second, how you do that. Uh, but this is just so that all of the new addresses are refreshed and, and new, uh, so that we, we don't miss anybody, we don't have any duplications, that kind of thing. So again, every lawn module uh, has a, has a uh, subscriber number. Uh, so if you replace the card in a unit, you also then have to do a lawn participant check because its new uh, card will have a different subscriber number. And you simply do that participant check by holding the T4 button. You see the T4 button uh, over here. And the T4 button then, if you hold it for 10 seconds, we'll do a lawn participant check. Now, if you wanted to reset the whole control back to factory default for some reason, then if you held that T4 button for 30 seconds, it would wipe all of the information they had in the control and send it back to where it was delivered from the factory. Um, so you don't normally want to do that unless you, you want to re reuse a, a device for somewhere else or something like that. But um, just be aware that if you hold it 10 seconds, it does a participant check, and if you hold it for 30 seconds, it resets the control. Okay? Uh, when we establish the control, there are some things that are going to happen. So we're going to do a participant check, and it's going to do those checks. It's going to check everybody. Um, so again, what's going to happen is you're going to see that number four indicator light. It's going to flash. And then after a few minutes, it's going to illuminate green. And the flashing is when it does basically doing the check, and it's basically getting onto the network and saying, Hey, uh, who's here? And everybody calls back and says, I'm here, I'm boiler number one, or I'm the mixing valve controller, or whatever it is, and it reports back to there. So when we look at the procedure then, and once we've got the uh, lawn participant pr uh, procedure hook connected, uh, then we have to initialize the control. So the next thing that does is looks for an internet connection. So the number three indicator tells me what the internet connection is doing. And it'll start out by flashing which is basically telling you it's looking for the DSL router and it's looking for an IP address. So again, this is why you don't have to establish anything, uh, any, any uh, work on the router because the VDCOM LAN 1 is going to do that for you. It's going to talk to the router and say, hey, look, I'm a new guy in town and I need an address so I can talk on the internet. Uh, once it finds that internet connection, it's going to flash quickly. So it so, says, so, okay, I'm hooked up to the internet now. I have internet connectivity. Uh, once it stays on yellow, it says, okay, now that I've gone to the internet, I'm also talking to the server. So I've, I've found the server in Germany as well. And uh, now we're going to illuminate green once the Vita data server sends back and says, okay, I know who you are, I recognize you, you're okay, uh, you're a VSPN control, uh, and it's going to stay on green. So a normal status would be a green light for both number three and number four indicator lights that tells you what's going on. So when you do the lawn participant check, it's going to take a few minutes to do that. So you be patient, you know, have a sip of coffee, uh, because it, depending on how many devices there are there, and uh, it's going to take a few minutes to do that. Um, once the initialization is, initialization is successful, um, you're going to see both the green lights indicating for the number three and four indicators, like I said. If it's not successful, you're going to see some of the other color, like red or yellow. And then you'll know that you, you have an issue and you have to you know, check your wiring or, or whatever it is to, to solve that problem. Okay, so when we do a participant check, what do you need? Well, all of the VitaCom LAN 1 ha uh, unit has to be connected to all the VitaTronic controllers you want to talk to. They all have to have a lawn card. They all have to have their own address. They have to be switched on. The power has to be on. Uh, and every unit in the bus has to have a unique lawn number. So that is established in coding when you put the lawn card in the boiler, you'll go into coding and you'll say you're going to be lawn participant 2 for boiler 2 or lawn participant 3 for boiler 3 or whatever you're going to establish before. Um, and the Vitatronic controller then also has to be the fault manager, so you have to set that. Uh, the only address you can't use is the address 99 because that's already reserved for the Vitacom 100 LAN 1. It has a permanent address of 99. So your boiler can be, you know, it, the default is going to be one on a new card. So if you only had one boiler, there's really not a lot you have to do there. But if you have multiple pieces of equipment, you'll have to assign different addresses for each piece. So now I have the unit, and it's connected, and it's on the Internet. Now I have to register it. So we're going to, to walk through how to set this up on the Vita Data server. If you do not have an account already, 
you go to the VitaData100.com website, and you can then create a new account by registering. So once you click register, uh, you're going to take you to a new page, and that page is going to have information for you to set up this account. So you're going to start out with your name and, and whatever your username wants to be. I mean, it's going to verify your username isn't used by somebody else, that kind of thing. Just the same as you do anytime you log on or register an account for something. Uh, once you have the account established, <clears throat> that's all you have to do with your account. You're, you have that account, and you can have an account for yourself and, and your technicians, or the homeowner has his own account, obviously. Uh, everybody has their own login, uh, just like you have your own internet login or email password. Once you've all, um, logged on and have an existing account, so you've created an account and you want to establish, um, you go into the, you want to get onto the system. So you're going to log on. So you go to the, again, the VitaDet 100 page, and then you click into the boxes and fill in your username and password that you created when you set up the account. Once you've done that, you're going to click login, and it's going to take you to the page where all of the systems that you have access to are visible. Now, that means that if you have a boiler at your house and you also have access to the neighbor's house or you're a contractor and you have five different customers that have Vitacom 100 Land 1s, you'll be able to see any equipment that you have here, and you'll see them in a list here. Uh, and you'll see the ones with the, you see the green check marks. Those are systems that are active. You see the ones down here with the red uh, lightning bolts. Those are systems that have alarms at the time when I logged on to here. Uh, so you quickly you get a view of what's going on. Uh, the name that you gave the system is here and, and that type of thing there. So very simple information, but very useful information on that page. Uh, just as a, I haven't pointed this out anywhere else in the, in the presentation, but up here in the corner here, uh, when you're done, you can log out just by clicking on the exit door. Now, if you want to set up a new system, so these are the ones that you already have established, but you've just put a new one into Mrs. Jones' house and, and uh, you want to establish it on the internet, so uh, you have to go down here to set up a new system. And you click on that, and you're going to have to have this number. This is that, uh, we talked about this, the, the number, of the information you might need of the VCOM LAN 1. This is the sticker that's inside the cover. You can see it right here. And this is the manufacturer's number or the serial number. You'll have to have that number handy because uh, you're going to need that number to register the unit. So this is the page that's going to come up when you click on New System. And the first thing you're going to do is click the right device. So it's a VCOM 100 LAN 1. You need to click the, the radio box there. And then you're going to fill in the information. Again, this is the information that you established uh, when you, you did the system. Again, this can be anything. This could be a, a username, uh, a system name, so you say you know, Mrs. Jones House, or you can call it whatever you want. That's, that's your choice of what you call it. Uh, the box below that is the country. Uh, what happens when we establish this is you plug this into the unit. And you're going to go on here and say, I want a new system. Uh, once you put the manufacturer's the serial number in here, this uh, Vita Data server is going to search the planet for this unit. Uh, so you don't have to know where it is other than what country it's in. And by picking the country, that just narrows the search down to IP addresses that might exist in Canada, let's say, and you can, uh, it'll find it. So you don't have to do anything to know where it is. You just basically have to tell it it's, that, what country it's in. Uh, and the next thing you're going to do then is put the serial number in. <clears throat> this is how the unit knows what one to look for. Uh, every unit has a unique serial number, unique device number. Uh, so when you put that number in, that system's going to hunt for that unit till it finds it. Now, it might take a few minutes, so you have, might have to wait a few minutes. Uh, but once it's established, that's as simple as it is. Here, a little radio box down at the bottom here. This is the word Wieder. Uh, Wieder is the German word for enter. And this is what we affectionately in Wiesman Canada call Jinglish. It's a, a German word that didn't, meet the, didn't get translated properly. Uh, this is going to be fixed. It's going to say enter. Uh, but for the short term, Vieter is entered. It might already be changed now. I haven't looked at this in a while, but I know that this is the one, uh, one Jinglish word that uh, we have on here that didn't, uh, didn't get translated properly when they translated this page. So there, like I said earlier, there are two types of accounts. <clears throat> Either type of account, uh, either operator or the um, administrator can access the system. Guest access the system as well. And you can see that yeah, on the left-hand side here, I have all the systems that the administrator sees. But over here, the guest operator only sees the systems that he's been invited to. 
So you don't have to worry that everybody sees everything. This is he only sees the systems as he's been invited to. So your, as an example, your tenant, he might have his house, uh, but if the uh, the landlord owns three buildings, they don't see the other buildings. They just see the the building that they that they uh, have guest access to. So you want to create a new user. So a new user is, again, it's either an operator or administrator. Uh, it can be a guest as well. So to do that, you start off with clicking and add a new user or create a new user. Uh, and you're going to get uh, a pop-up box for the administrative page and two radio boxes for create a new user or a guest user. Uh, and then you're going to get, if you do a new user, you're going to have to establish a new account for that user. So this could be uh, your, your customers. So you've established, you've hooked up a system, you've created yourself as an administrator, and you're going to create them an account that they can be an administrator on. So you have to create a new user. So you'd create a username and a password for them. Uh, they can go back in later and change that password um, once they log into their account. <clears throat> but they can also then, um, you can be set them up as an administrator so they can also manage other people's accounts as well, other people's um, uh, access as well. Now, if you invite somebody as a guest, it's a little simpler because all you have to have is their email address. In your e their email address, you don't have to create a password for them because what's going to happen is when you send that invitation, they're going to get an email from the server that says you've been invited to, you know, system whatever it is, and with the web page link so that they get there. If they don't have an account, they can, again, create an account, and they will establish that account. If they already have an account, they just basically log into their account, and once they've logged into the account, you're going to see you're going to see this page. So they go to my data under their account and they see invitations and they basically just have to acknowledge the invitation. So it's just clicking the radio box there that says, yeah, I want to be part of that system. I mean, that allows the uh, system then to be accessed by that user. Um, and it's as simple as that. So it's a very simple process to set up somebody as a guest user. So let's take a look at the app. In the app itself, we have a lot of functionality, a lot of power, a lot of features. Uh, in the app, we have the basic home screen. So this is what you see. It's a, this is the Android version. It's, it looks slightly different on the Apple version, but it's very similar. And we have some basic information on the home screen. We have the extended menu button. Uh, this button allows you to get into a drop-down menu for deeper functions, so different functionality, different levels. We'll go over that in a minute. You have the heating circuit that's currently displayed on the home screen. So if the heating system has more than one heating circuit, you can just use that arrow, punch the arrow with your finger there, and it will give you a, a box with all the other heating circuits. You can pick whichever one you want to use. Uh, everything below that point, everything below here, is related to this heating circuit we're looking at. So in, under heating circuit 2 or 3, you'll have the same buttons, but they, that information will, will be referred to heating circuit, whatever it is, okay? And this could be a customized name. We'll talk about that in a minute. But this doesn't have to say heating circuit 1. It could say main or RADS. Uh, you can customize the names the same as you can do it in the control. Uh, so the next thing down is the active program. So in this case here, heating circuit 1 is, is enabled for domestic and heating. But it could be domestic only. It could be a standby operation. Uh, then we have the daytime operation. You can see by the picture of the sun that it's in daytime mode. If it was in a reduced mode, in a nighttime mode, you'd see a picture of a moon uh, there, an icon for a moon. Uh, you have uh, the adjusted room temperature. This is the daytime room set point. Uh, again, there are lots of functionality to this, depending whether you have a Vita troll in the space or not. Um, so this is basically the same function as the boiler control allows you to adjust the room set point and you adjust the room set point by using the warmer and cooler adjustment here and then uh, you can send that information to the control. It also tells you what the outdoor temperature is. This is kind of a neat little function because you can take a look at your app and log on to your boiler in, in your cottage country and see what the weather's like, know what to take with you. Um, I do this uh, just when I do the control training. Uh, I like to log on to our BC boiler so I can show people what the temperature is in BC. And when it's cold here and it's, when it's warmer there, everybody goes, ah, and I say, yeah, but I can shut off the heating system in BC. And uh, that usually draws a, a little bit of attention. So uh, I've talked to Randy in BC, says, that's okay, we don't need heat in Vancouver anyway. So it's not very much fun after all when you look at it. So um, anyways, uh, the next function is the party mode. Uh, this is different on some of the newer controllers. You might be call this as comfort mode. Uh, and you might see at some point in the future this, this icon change, uh, it's being changed to a green leaf. So right now it's, it's, it's the champagne glass, which is party mode. 
and party mode is uh, as a mode we get to change the operating status of the boiler. Uh, then we have economy mode. Economy mode is the opposite of party mode, so we're going to we're going to adjust the system into a into a reduced mode. Uh, down here we have the operating status. The operating status tells me we see this the, the two arrows and the green uh, icon that tells me that the system is currently uh, up to date. Uh, and right next to it, you see when it was last updated. Uh, this is not going to crunch data endlessly. Uh, the last thing we wanted to do was have you go through your data plan on your phone because of the Wiesman boiler. Uh, so when you first log on, it's going to do an update right away. So you'll see what happens is this little, uh, two little arrows will go around in circles. That icon, green icon will be red. Uh, once it's updated, it'll be green. Now, again, the, how long that takes really depends on where you are, your internet speed connectivity, uh, how many devices are in the heating system that you're trying to hook up to. Uh, so it could be a few minutes, it could be a, a number of minutes, and it, it'll update itself. Once the, you see that green light, you know that the data on there is, is correct. Uh, and um, you can update it, again, manually. If you hit, that, hit the green icon or hit the red icon, if it's red, it will manually update at that point. Now, if I make a change to the temperature, uh, say I change the room set point, that's going to send data in, on that point. I don't have to refresh that. It's going to send that information automatically. Uh, but from the from the regular information, we've gone, obviously, again, we don't want you using up your data plan with this thing just continually updating the outdoor temperature. So um, we we uh, we established it so it would update the first when you first establish it, uh, and it updates as you make changes, but it won't update again automatically unless you refresh it. And then there's a help menu. Uh, every screen pretty much has a help menu. A help menu is a, a, a box that gives you help information on the information on that screen. So if you're not sure uh, what that 22 degrees in the middle of the thing is, when you hit the icon, it'll give you all the information about what's on that screen. So it, And it's contextual to the screen. So if you're looking at schedules, it'll be schedule information, that type of thing. So let's go a little deeper here. Let's look at party mode. When I hit the party mode button, Essentially what that is, is an extension of the daytime schedule. So I say my boiler normally goes into setback at a certain time of the day, and I want to stay up later today, uh, I want to have a party. So we're going to uh, push the party mode button, and it will stay in the daytime mode, but I can customize the daytime setting. So it doesn't have to be the regular daytime setting, I can make it a different daytime setting. Maybe I want it warmer, I want it cooler for my party, depending on how many people are hanging around in my house, maybe. In that case there, it's going to adjust the room temperature to that setting. Uh, it will automatically terminate itself based on what was set in coding. Um, now normally, those defaults are not changed, so it's basically an eight-hour extension if you didn't make any changes to coding. Um, and it's going to stay in party mode for that long. Now, if you decide that you know your party's not, it's kind of bummed out, it's not a very good party today, and you want to go to bed anyways, you can terminate it again manually by hitting the party mode button again. Uh, so that's party mode, the extension, one-time extension of the daytime schedule. Once it's done its one cycle, it will turn itself off and wait for you to hit it again for another time. Then the opposite of that is our economy mode. This, again, is a one-time adjustment. So if your you know, boiler normal is going to set back at 8, 10 o'clock at night, but you want to go to bed early tonight, you can hit the e economy mode button, and it will go into setback immediately and stay there until the next schedule comes around. Again, it can be terminated manually, so if you get up in the middle of the night, you can actually you know, take it out of economy mode and put it back into daytime mode just by hitting that icon again. So let's look at the extended menu. So this is the um, drop-down menu at the top, and once you've clicked that, you're going to get this box here. So you have home, messages, information, central heating, DHW, and systems. Uh, and this is, uh, once you click those, you'll get other information. So let's take a closer look. Under the home screen, or on the default messages, information, central heating, DHW, and system all have different functions. So let's take a look at the extended menu function under information. And you'll see there, again, another drop-down box here. So you have the general level, you have the boiler level, you have DHW level, uh, and you can see information for those. So once you're inside that level, you can change to a different level just by hitting the arrow. But the information you see under general in this case shows up as a data list. Now this is going to be current data based on its refresh. So this is the current outdoor temperature, the boiler temperature, common supply temperature, if a low loss header sensor, that type of thing. 
See, so yeah, I see that the pump is on and the burner is on. And I also have a number of hours here. And if those are the burner hours of operation, and I can reset that burner of hours of operation from there the same as I can do it from the boiler. The next one down is the DHW. So under DHW, I have DHW set point. So there's how I set my tank temperature. I have a time program for the DHW tank, as well as if I had a research pump, I also have a schedule for that. So that's under the DHW. Then under the uh, messages, I see over here I have the control. So if I had more than one boiler control, like three boilers and a cascade, they'd all be listed here. And you would simply click on this to get it. But in this case here, we only have one. So when I click on the alarm button, uh, I'm going to see all of the faults that have happened in that control since the last time it was reset. And just like the message you get in the email, it's going to tell you a timestamp, tells you that it's a fault, tell you that there's a fault in that controller. And you can see here it says uh, brake lead and outdoor temperature sensor. So it gives you some information, the fault code 18 beside it. Uh, that's the information you'll get. Now, this can be reset as a history. So uh, what's in here is anything that's happened since the last time it was reset. Uh, and if you want to clear that information, you can clear that. And I usually tell the contractors in the service course that that's one of the things I recommend they do is good housekeeping. As once you're finished working on a boiler, before you leave it, get back into your truck, uh, you reset the fault history so that any faults that are in that control are new, not something you've already addressed. And under the, again, menu under heating circuit one, we get into the, the central heating system. And again, we have the choice of the three heating circuits if they are there through that drop down. And I can see the room temperature. I can see the reduced room temperature. Again, this is the nighttime room set point. I can see my heating time program here and another program called holiday program. We're going to take a look at those two. So again, under heating circuit one, I can choose this one or I can pick another one. And this, again, could be a customized name. So there's my schedule, the way it shows up, and it's very graphical. I can see the orange box here is the schedule from, you know, from 540 to 1700 in this case. Uh, and I can extend that out by adjusting the schedule here. I can add an, another schedule here if I wanted more than one. Uh, I can take, in this case, I'm doing Thursday. The drop-down box would give me different days of the week. But let's say my Thursday program is the same program I want to use on Tuesday. I can copy that program just by going copy going to Tuesday and I'll have the option of pasting that program into it. So I don't have to do a separate schedule every day. I can copy and paste so that if I have Monday, Wednesday, Friday are the same and Tuesday, Thursday are different. It's a simple matter of copying those days from one to the next. So we see the next one down is the holiday program. Now this is a vacation schedule. So this is a, a, another mode. So we have party mode and eco mode, which is a one time. We have our daily schedule, which is happens every day that how we ever establish it. And we have the vacation mode. So if a, a customer wants to go on vacation, uh, they don't have to adjust their daily schedule. Basically, all they have to do is go in and put a departure date and a return date. If they decide that, you know, well, you know, the boss is really being hard on me and he won't let me take my vacation, they can reset that so it stays in. So it's, it's something they can clear. So just a note. That holiday schedule starts at midnight or 00 hours on the departure day and ends at 00 on the return day. So you just be aware that it starts at midnight on the day you have the calendar set for. Under the system level, you can see I now have access to all the different systems I have. In this case here, this is uh, you know, four different heating systems. Uh, the green one is active. The red triangles mean there's a fault or they're offline. And I can pick which one I want to look at simply by pushing the icon. So if I wanted to look at what was wrong in the system, I would simply click the icon there, and it would take me to that system. Now, again, it's going to take a few minutes. Uh, it's going to switch over your system, and it's going to have to refresh the data. So it takes a couple minutes, but it's not, not a terribly long wait. And it's, it certainly is convenient to be able to access more than one uh, building at a time. We also have the settings. So this is the little gears you saw at the bottom of the screen. And anytime we get into settings, it gives you basic uh, information on setting the control. In this case here, we can set the temperature, Fahrenheit or Celsius. You can set the uh, account. So if I decide that, you know, I want to borrow somebody's phone and they have the app, but I want to look at my house, I can log out and log in as them or myself on their phone. 
so you can you don't have to be locked to one account on a phone. You can log in and out to with different users if you wanted to do that. And maybe you have an on-call phone, so uh, your on-call guy gets his own phone that week when he's on call, and he can log in as himself for that period of time, that type of thing. So uh, you can also select the access to the system. So this is going to say which of the systems you want to show up on there. Remember, we saw the four systems before, uh, and which systems you want to you want to access and those things. Uh, and down below that, we have the change the viewable heating circuit name. So this is the, you can change, you go into here and I can customize that. So again, we said it was heating circuit one. We could say main floor heating or whatever that is. So there's the where we can customize that name. Uh, then there's also information on the app. So it tells you the current revision and the software version, all that kind of thing. The, the basic housekeeping stuff for the app, uh, the copyrights and, and all that kind of stuff that we, that we need to put in there. So now you have a Vitacom 100 LAN 1. You established an account. You've set up the uh, internet connectivity. You have uh, the systems uh, talking to the Viesman uh, Vita Data server, and now you have an app that you can access the boiler remotely from anywhere where you have internet connectivity. So this is a very simple system, a very flexible system. It gives uh, the homeowner and the contractor both ways of getting into the system and operating the system. Very efficient, very um, flexible system. And again, like I said earlier. Uh, this is a hardwired system when we did that intentionally because Wi-Fi is notoriously uh, bad in boiler rooms. But we, we have done our homework and looked at those uh, other modules for you to show how you can connect the, the internet to it. Uh, so it's a very simple, simple way to do it. So I hope you, you uh, found some valuable information that you can go out there and use some of these devices. Uh, like I said we earlier, there's a, a couple of contractors that we know of that uh, are actually using these as, as money-making tools for themselves other than just selling a unit. They're selling a service to their homeowners. Uh, and they can monitor the system and they can dispatch to the systems and that kind of thing. So it's a very, very valuable tool to look at. And again, it works with every Vitatronic control, both the current uh, black front controls and the older white front controls. Uh, it works on any of those systems. And if you have a cascade, it will see the cascade and all the individual boilers so that you, you have access to everything. So if you need any further information, you can contact the Viesman sales representative, and that's available on the website. If you don't know where they are, you can click on the, uh, the sales network on the website and uh, click on the region here. You'll see a map here with all the different regions of the Canada, and you just click on the region, and it'll pop up the, the local sales network uh, contact for you, and from there, you can, you can find out your contact information. Or if you want just manuals, you want literature, you can go to the website again and click on the Pro Login tab, and from there, you're going to get the, the Viesman documentation page. Uh, on that page, we have all the documentation on everything we currently sell under current documentation and even historical documentation. So if it's an old piece of equipment that you're not sure, you, don't, you know, the manuals have disappeared, you can go to that uh, tag and go to historical documentation and get information on that. Uh, if you want a little more detailed training on any products or how to service equipment, well, we also offer seminars here in Waterloo and Langley, British Columbia. Those seminars are either a one- or two-day seminar. Uh, you can sign up them a couple of different ways. You can sign up through them through the website. We go to the Academy tab on the website, and it'll give you a list of all of our, uh, basically, our what we call our open date seminars, where you can sign up as, a, as an individual person to, to the Academy directly. Uh, you also might um, take advantage of your local rep network, because they, a lot of times, will bring groups in for specialized training. So they might say, uh, we got a group from my territory that, that wants to know about a specific product or a specific task, and they will bring in a group for a one or two day uh, session. And that's also a great way to, to, to network with your contractors in your area, uh, as well as, as learn something here at Viesman and see the facility. So either, either way, you can get a hold of us and, and, and log into some of our more detailed training. Um, this uh, internet training, um, all of the webinars we're running will be going up on the website. You'll be able to go into the contractor area and watch this uh, webinar again. So if you had got a guy at work that uh, couldn't make it because he was stuck on a roof somewhere or stuck in a boiler room somewhere, you can certainly uh, tell him that, you know, what the seminar was about and if he wants to log in. Thanks for coming to the webinar today. We're just a little bit ahead of schedule, so that's maybe good for you guys and have lots of things to do. Uh, my name is Mark Norris. I'm the Academy Instructor here at Viesman Waterloo. So uh, if you need to uh, uh, get a hold of me, you'll see my contact number there and uh, by email. If it's a technical support question, then certainly call Tech Support. Uh, they're the fastest way to get you help. Again, thanks for coming. I uh, hope you enjoyed yourself today and good use of Vitacom Land 1.